Hey, what's up, Cokesbury Church? Uh, my name is Josh French, director of Cokesbury Students. And uh, man, this is, we are in a different time right now. And you know what, that's okay. And uh, so we just want to welcome you into something that's brand new for us, but something that hopefully feels very familiar. Uh, over the next couple weeks, or as long as it takes, we're going to do whatever we have to do to just connect with you and to be with you. And, and part of that answer to a very long question and problem is this right here. So we're going to spend a few minutes doing what we know how to do. We're going to tell some jokes, we're going to play some games, we're going to have some fun, or we're going to talk about Jesus, uh, because that's who we are and that's what we do. So we want to thank you for clicking and inviting us to wherever you are on your phone or computer or on your TV maybe. I, I don't know what your setup is, but um, I can assure you this, that this is not going to be perfect, that this is going to be temporary, that I can't wait for the day that we're all together again. Uh, but. For now, we're gonna do, like I said, what we know how to do. And when things get weird, when times get tough, this brain and these brains, hey, we're willing to get weird. And we've got so many ideas that are kind of weird. So we invite you in, and until we come up with a better name, we welcome you to the Cokesbury Student Ministry Show. sports to watch right now which is real unfortunate but you are at home and if you have a couple of supplies we have a game that you can play with your family so what you will need is you will need a dice you will need one pen or pencil and you will need a piece of paper for every person that's playing the way this game works is we call it rolling six and what you need to do as these guys are demonstrating is everybody rolls the dice one at a time make sure you have disinfected and sanitized your hands um, the first person to roll a six grabs the one pen that's in the middle, starts writing their numbers, one to a hundred. You say your numbers out loud. Then the dice keeps going for everybody else that's playing. Next person to roll a six takes the pen and starts writing their numbers. First one to a hundred wins. So let's check in on the guys and see how they're doing. You are the worst. I, I, I am the best. That's my six. Let's go. Take it home. Take me home. Take me home. 95. 96. 97, 98, 99, We have a winner. And let me tell you, competition gets pretty fierce in the dice game. Have fun. All right, Cokesbury students, welcome back. As you know, we love jokes and we love memes, so we figured we'd do a whole segment devoted to it here. I really, I prepared a mustache joke for you guys, but I figured I'll shave it for next week, or maybe a few weeks down the line. Well played, sir. Well, I'll just see y'all well later. Well played. No, I actually, I still well have played. a joke. I'm shaving that one. I still have a joke. All right. Too, it's too good. Yeah. It's too good. What did the pancake say to the baseball player? I don't know what. Batter up. Get it, because you Pancake think. batter. Yep. <laughs> All right. Very good stuff. And a new segment from Joshua. He loves memes, so I'll I let him introduce memes. this one. So I am what you would call a meme connoisseur, if you will. So if we could get this meme up here, please. Look at that glory. Look at that beauty right there. This is what we see the Americans freaking out over COVID-19. Um, if you're familiar with SpongeBob, uh, the sea bear episode where they draw their mighty sea bear circle, what we're saying pretty much is that Americans believe if you have a roll of toilet paper arranged in a circle, you will be protected from the sea bear that is the COVID-19. Or if you just sing the campfire song song, which I like to personally do very much. So. That's your meme for the week right there. Can you give us a taste of the Campfire Song song? No, I cannot. All right, well, that's all we got for this week. We'll catch you all next week on Joke of the Week slash Meme of the Week. <laughs>do anything without talking about Jesus. I mean, we all agree that's kind of what we're here for. So we're in our uh, series called Doubtful, where we're talking about different doubts we may have. We've been asking some big questions, and this week we're gonna ask the question, what do I do when I doubt the Bible? Um, and so we're just gonna kind of let you in on how we prepare for, this, for these things. We just kind of sit around, the four of us, and, and have some honest conversations. So uh, as we talk, you'll see some small group questions 
And if you want to pause and talk about that with whoever you're with or wait till the end or, you know, do a little group FaceTime call, however you want to do that. Uh, but uh, we just want to invite you into our conversation. So what do we do when we doubt the Bible? Where do we start? I think the first place that you have to start is where are you at in your walk with God? Okay. Like, where do you see your faith in God? Where do you see your identity in God? Um, and what you think about who God is. And if you even believe in him to begin with, like mm-hmm. we talked about last week. Yeah. So I think that's like the starting place for yeah. everything. I like that. So all those experiences build in to what you think about the Bible and when you read it? Yeah, I would I would think so because it kind of gives you like a lens to view it through. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think we gotta ask the bigger question, you know, what is the Bible for you? You know, if I trust what who God is and what he says he is, then the Bible says we have communicating with me and then therefore I gotta think that the Bible means something. You know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> we have to edit out some of these. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Reed, you said something uh, as we were kind of uh, kind of getting ready for all this stuff that, uh, you know, why are you reading the Bible? So do you care, you care to share that a little bit? Yeah. You're talking about like proving, disproving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it has to, the, one of the big questions is, are you reading the Bible to prove or disprove whether God exists? Which I think quite a few people read it, trying to do that, and this kind of speaks to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, but I think generally we should be uh, reading the Bible to prepare ourselves because it's like, you even mentioned this yesterday talking about the story of Jonah. While we might not all have the experience of getting swallowed by a fish, Mm -hmm. most of us will not have that experience. It's pretty unique. I mean, I did like once, but it's kind of scary. Well, this guy knows. (laughs) (laughs) It's a wild time. Uh, (laughs) But while we might not have that experience, and while we may even feel the need to prove whether that really happened or not, I think uh, we can still take a lot from that. We can prepare ourselves for that moment when God's asking us to do something a little out of our comfort zone or a little scary, or he's asking for a little courage from us. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he starts us down a path that maybe we weren't originally thinking. We're, We're reading that to prepare ourselves instead of just to prove or disprove whether in fact he was swallowed by a fish or a whale or whatever, you know? Yeah. And we can't. And, keep and we can't get caught up in the, the minute details because um, when I was telling you guys earlier that um, when I was in college, I took an Old Testament class that I just loved. And one of the first things we learned is that there are two completely different creation stories in the Bible, in the same book. One of them man is made first, one of them man is made last, but all of them prove that God loves us and He created us. And that's the bigger picture to focus on, not is every single detail exactly you know, make complete sense to us mm-hmm. because that's not the point. It's what's the bigger picture and that it's God loves us and we are his people and he, um, you know, he has the best things planned for us um, in lots of different ways. So just remembering that it's not the tiny little details like was he swallowed by a fish, um, but, you know, God loves us and may ask us to do something big or however that plays out in our own lives. Yeah, gotcha. And then the when you were talking about the proving or disproving thing, I think a lot of times when we want to like talk about the Bible, especially with people that are of different faiths, that we're not trying to establish like you should argue that the Bible is just more correct than the Quran, you know, or the Book of Mormon or any of these other things like that. That is not it. That's not it at all. I think the conversation that we're trying to have, and we want to make this very clear, is that as believers, as Christians, at some point we're going to encounter doubts and maybe those doubts are around the Bible, but then how do we navigate those waters within the Holy Bible? So we're not trying to necessarily disprove or whatever, but we're trying to, how does this speak to me in this moment? And um, one of the favorite series we ever did was last year uh, when was, you weren't here, obviously, <laughs> but we, were, we just did a whole thing about uh, the Bible. And, and one of the things that's always stuck with me and I'm pretty sure I didn't write this, <laughs> was that, you know, the Bible's not always about you, but it's always for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just to stick with Jonah in that, you know, it's like, I, I can't relate to like being, you know, thrown into the belly of a whale, but I can relate to hearing God ask me to do something that I didn't want to. 
And then, you know, life just was not all together until I was following God's will. Mm -hmm. And so through that, you know, yeah, that story is not exactly about me, but man, there is a lot in that tale that is for me. So yeah. kind of got to navigate some doubts to get through that stuff sometimes. Yeah. And I think that goes back to like a lot of people like to use the method of like putting your name mm -hmm. in the story you're reading in the Bible which in some in some circumstances I think can be helpful but I think a lot of times can be misleading and that's kind of the Bible's not about me because it's not written about us it's written about people that lived a long time ago uh, that experienced much different things that lived much different lives so it's not about us but there's still a lot to take from it so like instead of putting our name in it's more about like seeing the big picture and understanding how that can impact our lives I think yeah. I get that. Uh, so uh, throughout, and one of our confirmation lessons is about John Wesley and Wesleyan quadrilateral. And so he uh, always recommended the Wesleyan quadrilateral is uh, when you like decision making. So it's tradition. You're gonna have to help me out here. Tradition, scripture, reason, reason, reason and experience. Those are the four things. So we take. So scripture is really like this. Uh, this part of a process of kind of making some decisions and then we kind of have to take our experience and reason and tradition and then use that to view the lens of scripture right right <clears throat> yeah it's kind of like what you were saying a minute ago it's just taking our experiences and figuring out where does this speak and fit into me right and it's like it's even to go back to what you started off with it's uh it's kind of that idea of um if we're just reading the bible to read it without like any uh, expectation might be the wrong word, but without bringing anything else into it, like context, like tradition, mm -hmm. context, experience, our own logic and reason, then it, it is like, a, then it, you're just reading like a dry text. Like, I don't think you're going to get a lot yeah. out of it that way, Cause, personally. Because we have to remember too, and I mean, going back to the Jonah story and going to the Wesleyan quadrilateral of experience, it's really hard to relate the Bible to our daily lives. And I think that's why we have such a hard time mm. doubting it, or just have like such an easy way to doubt it, I think, yeah. like, is what I'm trying to say. And it's really more about just seeing, okay, where in the Bible does Jesus love somebody? Mm. Where in the Bible does God move? Where does someone show love to their neighbor? And I think that's the main thing we gotta focus on. Yeah. And what speaks to you may not speak to me because exactly. of where I am in my life. Yeah. So the Jonah story, there's so many different things you can take out of that story, mm -hmm. whether it's the dealing with adversity, whether it's being asked by God to do something that you don't want to do, whether it's running away from God, um, you know, mm -hmm. in different in different ways. Well, depending on where I am in my current walk or where you are, what speaks to you out of that story may be completely different whenever you read it. Mm -hmm. And I may read it one day and get something completely different than if I read it the next day. So it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not gonna be the same for every single one of us. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining in and thank you for watching. Uh, we hope that you check out these small group questions. Continue this conversation. Uh, you, if you wanna talk to us about it, email. You can tweet, Instagram DM, uh, get in the comment section, wherever you're watching this. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And we got a little bit more coming up next. Well, number one in the books. Yeah, I think it went okay. Felt good. I, I think it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it took a while to yeah. get it all. But yeah. what did you did I, you think they'll like it? I hope so. I hope so. I hope they'll like it. Yeah. I, I do miss them. Yeah. 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 I do miss them. It's really it's too quiet around here. It is. Cool. Well, you're it's you're pretty loud. Okay. Yeah. So. I can make sure. up for some. So That's we got true. that. Okay, we do, are we, we do miss them. are we standing to go? Yeah, maybe yeah, you know, just we'll, kind of yeah, spread we'll out just, more. There we go. Cool. No, you yeah, can keep just. Nice. You just know just over here? a little I, bit more. So like, if, I just keep, if I keep going, further, what if I'm over here? I that's great. It's great. Right here? It's great. Just turn off the lights whenever you're done. Thanks. Okay. All right.